Okay, so I wanted to record this uh, the second follow-up video uh, in some location near the Land Rover, but uh, as can sometimes happen in uh, England, it has been raining non-stop day in and day out. So I'm going to record it here and then cut to uh, to the Land Rover. Um, why I wanted to put a lithium-ion phosphate uh, battery into my Land Rover as opposed to a lead-acid battery as the uh, trusty old um, 68 amp hour uh, Toyota battery started to struggle in the uh, last winter. And the problem I had is that everyone on the internet, people had either put a very big kind of 50 amp hour uh, lithium ion phosphate battery, which is very expensive at the moment, probably you're looking at about 500, uh, 500 pounds, $800, $1,000, something like that, um, which is just so much more expensive than a lead acid alternative and is, is kind of difficult really to justify. I saw a few posts for people who were using um, 20 and 30 milliamp hour batteries, uh, sorry, amp hour batteries in um, in petrol engines and wondered if they'd work in diesels. So I tried a 20 amp hour and then a 30 amp hour battery from Powerlite and both of them worked. Uh, they had enough cranking amps to turn over, but uh, it depends really at the end of the day how many devices you have in your car uh, and how you use it. I saw a few posts for people who were using um, 20 and 30 milliamp hour batteries, uh, sorry, amp hour batteries in um, in petrol engines and wondered if they'd work in diesels. So I tried a 20 amp hour and then a 30 amp hour battery from Powerlite and both of them worked. Uh, they had enough cranking amps to turn over, but uh, it depends really at the end of the day how many devices you have in your car uh, and how you use it. I'm Christian Borman. I've been blogging and posting about cars, bikes, food, tech, and all sorts of things for years. So I figured it's time to start vlogging. Yeah, if I were you, I'd run for the hills or stick around and see what happens. So here we can see <coughs> how my battery box has ended up in the Defender when I got it. This box was a bit mucky because every time you go into mud, the mud comes up and muckies it. Um, and so I cleaned it out and given that it was well ventilated and open to water coming in before basically to get around the fact that lead acid batteries give off all sorts of fumes that you don't want building up in the cabin and I'm now moving, I have moved to lithium ion then I can seal up this battery box which I have done with Dynamat um, over all the holes So I made these little adapters by buying some uh, small connectors that I found on Amazon. And I do have another set of connectors somewhere else that have a slightly bigger th thread. I think most of them come with an M8. This is an M6 and to connect to this battery you will need an M6. So I'm going to mount this vertically. The last battery I had, like so, but there's a bit more space there, so I think this one is going to have to be mounted to the top. Now, one of the things you will notice is that it's probably better to wait until you've got your battery in place because these cables are really, really stiff and designed around a battery that weighs 30 kilos, not one that weighs three. So I'm going to try and leave that in there. I'm going to stick it inside this plastic bag. It does have some washers in it at the moment. It won't do in a second. Right, and drop the washer. That's it. Right, so I'm going to stick this one in here. I should have somewhere else to put the positive in the meantime. But at the moment I'm just worried about touching one with the other. Right, so I'm going to use this nifty little box positive with this lovely isolator switch that I bought from Amazon and didn't come with all the parts. But that will do. Right, so we unscrew this like this. This one's a bit tighter. Right. Interestingly my 
previous battery that I had in this was a 68 amp hour Toyota battery, which I may show a little bit of a video of later. Um, and that seemed to turn over okay, except when it got very cold. And this, actually put this somewhere where it's not going to cause any problems. I know there's no electricity going through it, so it shouldn't matter right now. But I still don't like touching. See that, that bag got stuck on the dynamat. Lovely stuff, dynamite. Sticks to absolutely everything. As you can see, there's a bit of the filth still in there from the battery box, but I don't really care right now. So we're gonna put this back sort of here. Yeah, I will start recording a bit better. But yeah, your first video should have that grainy sort of feel to them fit the battery where you want to keep it. Now this one's a bit heavier and a bit stable base than the smaller one which only has a very small base as you can see. So I'm going to leave this one vertical like that and I'm going to velcro it down at some point. But right now I want to get going and not be moaned at for being slow in a minute. So I'm just going to put this Straight in is a straight swap, always check red to plus, red to plus. Always good to measure twice, only electrocute yourself once. So I think the saying goes. Right, now some of you right now will be saying, no, don't put. Positive on first, I don't know, I'm not an electrician, electronics escapes me. However, what I do know is that these Amazon um, connectors that I bought weren't quite big enough for the stretched old lead connectors, and so I created a copper shim. I looked online, there are lots of shims made of cheap, nasty aluminium. I had some copper hanging around. Obviously, you have to clean all the oxide or rust or blue stuff or whatever it's called from the outside to get a good connection. But I don't know if you can quite see the copper there, but that's been on there. So all the vibrations that the Land Rover has, and seems to work fine. So, let's take this off, and plug this in. This is going to be fun. Again, thank God for multi-tools. a bit too much. Let's undo it. So what I do is put a double nut in there. We're going to have to get it in first. Oh, nice spark. Which means we've got some battery. I should get a little message now from all my trackers saying, yo, back online. Right, once you've got that seated you can then just turn around. Make sure obviously this is the negative so connecting the body frame is not going to be a big problem. But still always be careful around batteries. subject to 12 volts of these oh, so 600 amps so the little PS20 I think has 580 amps which is just enough um, I think you need 470 or 500 depending on who you speak to to turn over a diesel 300 TDI um, engine and the PS30 that I've got here I think has 700 amp hours of cold cranking amp hours. That is. And this is the. I've got no affiliation with power units. It's just that I found these to be the only units that were small, cost-effective, and had very high cranking amps. And of course, I should 
actually try. And tighten that. But I think, to be honest, that will do for now for the video. You're good. Where I was going, now put this broken connector back on. See all the wonderful things you buy on Amazon that you never need and always forget to buy the things that you really should be getting more of, like a replacement of one of these top caps. But you know, life's too short sometimes, isn't it? So there we go. We now have the battery. Let's give it another test. Oh, you're not supposed to do that whilst it's in use. Doesn't matter. I hope <laughs> he says. So that's all back in there. Obviously, there's not the best wiring in the world because it makes part of my cabin space unusable. What I'm going to try and do actually is optimize that a little bit by turning this around and then trying to tighten it again. not worked at all but anyway there we have a battery box that has been liberated of a stinky old battery and a lot of dead weight one final benefit obviously of course is the fact that you can have plenty of space to leave a cup of coffee whilst you do work now whereas before if the battery was occupying all this space, or in fact you had two nasty old batteries, where are you going to put your coffee? So there you go. I hope you found that useful. Um, I think it's some original content in that it's uh, something I, I couldn't find the answer myself to this on, on, on YouTube or on the internet. Um, and I hope that it's useful to you to use a, a smaller and I think pretty cost-effective lithium-ion phosphate battery um, as opposed to a dirty old lead acid battery. Um, obviously the concept of putting a coffee there is, is a bit of a joke, but it does open up a lot of space to put a lot of other useful, um, a lot of other useful storage in, in your Land Rover. So if you did find this useful or you just liked it, or you want to see more of these videos, obviously don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button. There, there's, um, there's more and more being edited and they will go out and hopefully I can get out of this room and uh, do a bit more shooting, uh, in, in somewhere a bit nicer than this.